All right, Jen, so rule number one to suiting up as an adult man is to know what you want. As the wise Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you are going to wind up somewhere else. But seriously, gents, you've got to have an idea of the image you want to project. Perhaps you want your suit to signal power, then you're going to go with the classic look of a dark colored suit with a light shirt and a red necktie. Or perhaps you don't want to stand out. You want to blend in. You want to go for a more monochromatic look that still is an elegant, just well put together outfit. Or maybe your idea of suiting up is even more casual. You want to go with a dark color turtleneck, a green sports jacket, maybe a white pocket square. Kind of like this look I got right here. I get it, gents. As an adult man, you want to suit up properly. Whether you're wearing a suit, blazer, sports jacket, you want to look good when you put on that jacket. In today's video, I've got you covered with the ultimate guide on how to suit up. All right, Jen, so you figured out what you want. Now let's go on to rule number two, get what you want. I know this one sounds obvious, but so many men compromise. They've got an idea, a vision of what they want, but because of budget, because of time constraint, they settle. They go for something that is just okay. Now, gents, I definitely understand limitations when it comes to time and money. That being said, make this a priority, especially if your image, if your look is going to have an effect on your career. Perhaps you got to save up for a few months to be able to afford the quality you want. Perhaps you got to learn a bit more. Watch a few dozen of my videos so you have a better idea of what you need. Guys, whatever it may be, understand if you make it a priority, you can make it happen. Rule number three, know and live by the style pyramid when you're making purchases. Fit, function and fabric. When you're grabbing an item, if it doesn't have all three, then skip it. Rule number four, function over fashion. Understand the law of interchangeability. The way it works is if you got four pairs of shoes, four shirts, four trousers, four jackets, you don't have four outfits. No, if there's 100% interchangeability, you have 256 outfits. Own less, but higher quality clothing and get tons of outfits from it. Rule number five, style is a ladder as Littlefinger would say, but seriously, the analogy holds up because if the ladder is not on a good foundation, it's going to fall. It's not going to be fun to climb. If you're going up and there are rungs missing, you are not going to really trust the ladder. So, with your outfit, the details matter. It's not just about the suit. It's about the shoes. It's about the shirt. It's the way everything works together. And understand like multiplication, if you've got a zero in the equation, guess what? It is going to tear the whole thing down. So, pay attention to those little details. The sum of the equation depends on it. And last but not least, to suit up properly, practice wearing this clothing because a lot of people find it uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. It's just unfamiliar. If the clothing fits you, oftentimes it's made from a very high quality wool, cotton. These are very comfortable garments. You just got to get used to wearing them. And when you do, all of a sudden the magic happens. Now, for my suiting up experience today, I traveled to Chicago to work with today's sponsor, Suit Supply. Now, gents, as you can tell here on my trip to Chicago, I got to take advantage. I was right there at the opening and they opened up the terrace for me. Absolutely beautiful. I love the views of the city right there. What I love about Suit Supply is when you walk in, it is full of inspiration. Seriously, from the way that they've dressed those mannequins to the way they've got the clothing laid out and the combinations that are just sitting there in front of you. And the people that work at Suit Supply, they're style enthusiasts. Just like me, they go off and they do the research, they watch videos, they read in the books. These are people that live and breathe style. So, when you go in there and you need advice, you need an opinion, you're going to get an expert, someone that can come in and point you in the right direction. And that leads me to another thing I absolutely love about Suit Supply. They are a one-stop shop. So, if you're going to buy a suit, you're going to buy a black tie, if you're going to get a sports jacket, a blazer. If you want to grab sweaters, you want some knitwear, if you're looking for a great selection of shoes, socks, belts, pretty much anything you need when it comes to menswear, outerwear, they've got you covered over at Suit Supply. And if you're looking for a custom suit, they've got you covered with their custom made program. Guys, I've actually covered this in a whole other video, which I will link to down in the description. And gents, when you go over to the Suit Supply website, check out their look builder. Absolutely love how realistic this is. You can take the clothing and you can see the combinations and the different outfits you can put together. So, gents, go check out Suit Supply. I'm going to link to them down in the description below. For years, I've been a customer because when it comes to the quality to price ratio, Suit Supply cannot be beat. Awesome company. Proud to support them. Just great company for suits. So, when you suit up, as I mentioned earlier, you've got to understand where do you want to go with this? What type of message do you want to send with your outfit? If you're going into a store to purchase a suit, you want to make sure that you buy the right one. Now, is this going to be your first suit? Is this going to be your 10th suit? Is this going to be your 52nd 
suit in my case. So, I knew for me that, you know, I can have a little bit of fun with this. I still want to go with something that's classic, something conservative, something that I will get miles out of because I'm a very practical person. So, I went with a suit that was dark, had a very interesting black and blue pattern to it. It was a very small pattern, but it was from a distance. It's actually going to look solid, like a very dark blue, almost a bit of black in there. I went with the vest right there because I wanted to have a little bit of fun. As you can see, a white shirt, with a nice tie right there. But overall, this thing actually fit really well right off the rack. There were a few adjustments that Zoe made for me actually before I showed up because he actually had my measurements on file. But overall, this thing fit on pretty much perfectly right out the gate. Now, what about for a guy that doesn't wear suits very often? Maybe it's your first suit or your first suit in 25 years. In this case, simply go with a navy or a charcoal gray. Again, that's what's nice about having an associate. They can point you in the right direction, but go with something dark. You can go with a semi-solid, maybe like a herringbone weave, something that from a distance looks solid. And I'm talking maybe three to four feet. You get up close, you see maybe a little bit of a pattern in it. Now, the reason I recommend these colors is that they are incredibly interchangeable. Let's say you're a young professional, a consultant, you're going into a law firm, you're starting to work in the finance field and you need a few suits. Well, guess what? You can have a few in slight variations of gray right there. Yeah, you wear a gray suit and you've got a few, but no one's going to actually say anything if you actually wear the same suit two days in a row because, you know, your other ones at the cleaners. And yes, you've got to, you know, maybe change out the shirt, change out the tie make sure to shower. Point being is no one's going to notice. They're going to think, oh, he just owns a few gray suits. So, next up, let's talk measurements. Let's talk fit. When you go into a higher end menswear store, if you don't know your size, if they're going to make some a custom garment for you, they're going to take your measurements, your shoulder width. They're going to measure your sleeve length. They're going to look at your torso, your chest, your stomach size. They want to get an accurate representation of your body dimensions. And they'll use this information to either build a custom garment or to grab the right garment for you off the rack. So, that's going to be measurements. And some people actually do like to wear their best fitting clothing, which I would recommend because they could even take that. And if you walk into a department store, you can simply measure that and then go looking at other garments that before even trying them on, actually measure the shoulder length, measure the sleeve length. But once you've got that information, we then have to try the clothing on because fit is different than measurements. Fit is actually how the clothing feels on you. And here's the thing, you could have twins who are the same exact size, same measurements, and one can put on a shirt and feel it's tight and the other one can feel it's perfect. And it really just comes down to how does somebody like to wear a garment? Some people like to wear it looser, some people like to wear it a little bit closer. And with the trends going on right now, we're seeing things start to loosen up a bit, which is probably good for, you know, back in 2010, I mean, things were super tight, super close. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you try the garments on and so you see how the fit is and if it's something that you enjoy. Now, on the subject of fit, I want to talk about a point that I hit on earlier. The difference between between uncomfortable and unfamiliar. See, a lot of guys are used to wearing really loose clothing or clothing that just didn't fit them properly and they become used to that. And so, when they try something that looks great on them but fits maybe a little bit closer, they find it uncomfortable. But that's because they're not used to it and they actually have full freedom of movement. The clothing is made from a very high quality material that's incredibly soft. They're just not used to it touching their body in that way. Give it a little bit of time and look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I can move. I actually feel pretty good. It just doesn't feel what I'm used to. Give it a little bit of time because you could find that actually this is the fit that you're looking for and it can really slim up a silhouette and make a guy that was just used to baggy clothing look so much better when he wears something that actually fits his profile and his build. So, at this point, you know what you want, you know what your measurements are and you're trying different garments on. And most of these are fitting you pretty well, but how to be able to tell a good fit on a jacket. So, first up, look at the shoulders. If it doesn't fit you in the shoulders, do not buy the jacket. It is not ever worth getting an adjustment in the shoulders of a jacket unless it's an heirloom piece. And the biggest offense here is that some guys are going to buy a jacket that is too large. The shoulder points are going down the arm and I get it. This is oftentimes guys that are really big and they're trying, you know, to get it to fit in other places. But if it is way too big in the shoulders, it's never going to look good. In addition, if it's too tight and these are guys maybe that are in great shape, 
little bit thinner guys. They're trying to fit into a smaller jacket and their arms, it's just pushing out. When you see something like this, it's not good. Next up, let's look at the length of the jacket. This is another area that you don't want to compromise on. You should be able to put your hands down and about where your knuckles are is where the jacket should end. Now, we see a lot of times jackets are going to be a little bit shorter, especially the modern cuts. That's not necessarily a bad thing. As long as your buttocks are fully covered, when it goes to length though, if it is going beyond, you know, your fingers, yeah, this is way too long and again, a very expensive fix and it can only be adjusted so much. So, I would skip on the jacket if it doesn't fit you here. Now, let's look at the torso. We're talking about the stomach. We're talking about the chest area. You've actually got a lot of play here. Most tailors are going to be comfortable bringing a jacket in about an inch to an inch and a half. That being said, you want to get it as close to perfect off the rack. So, it's worth looking around at the different fits, the different styles. Now, in my experience, it's a lot easier to bring in a jacket, basically to take a larger jacket, make it a little bit smaller than it is to take a smaller jacket and to open it up. And the reason being, is there material in there to let out? That being said, if the material is there, a tailor can usually let a jacket out by a solid inch to an inch and a half. Now, you may be wondering, what's the limitation with actually bringing in a jacket or shortening a jacket? Well, it really comes down to proportions, placement of pockets. Whenever you start moving things too much, all of a sudden, those all of a sudden look off center and the whole jacket, the whole silhouette starts to fall apart. Now, when it comes to sleeve length, I find that most jackets off the rack need to be shortened a bit and that's why you want to be wearing your dress shirt, the dress shirt that you would wear actually with that jacket. The reason being is you want to say, okay, how much am I going to show whenever my arms are down? Usually, I like to show about half an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch, but there are limitations. So, if the jacket actually has working buttons, these are called surgeon cuffs. They're really fancy. They're really nice, but they do limit actually, you know, how much they can shorten the sleeves. So, be aware of that. All right. So, you got the fit of the jacket right. Now, let's look at the trousers. And a lot of guys skip over this even though trousers are so much easier to adjust. And there's really only a couple things that you need to look at. First up, the hem. That's going to be the length of the trousers. A lot of people, you know, okay, it's an inch long, maybe two inches long. I'll just simply hike up the pants. No, don't do that. It never looks good. Remember, I talked about style is a ladder. It depends on every rung to maintain the integrity. You don't want to have a great fitted jacket mixed with trousers that aren't going to fit properly. Now, when it comes to hemming your trousers, you've got four general options here when it comes to dress pants. You've got no break, you've got a quarter break, you've got half break, and you've got a full break. My advice here, if you're a taller guy, yeah, go for a full break, go for a half break. If you're a shorter guy, definitely go for no break or a quarter break. Proportionally, in my opinion, it just looks better this way. The other area on the trousers you want to make sure you get a good fit is going to be on the waist and the buttocks area because if it's too tight here, which I occasionally see, you're going to have basically your pockets are going to balloon out and it's just not a great look. So, make sure you've got room there. Otherwise, you're going to bend over it and yeah, they're going to tear in the back. Not a good look. So, at this point, you got an idea of what type of fit you're going for, but you still got to make a determination of the fabric and the style. So, first up, the fabric. As I talked about, if this is going to be one of your first suits, just go with a solid or a semi-solid. Again, a semi-solid looks like a solid from a distance. Usually, you want to go with a darker color. Lighter colored suits in general are going to come off as more casual. They are perfectly fine if this is going to be your fifth suit. If you wear suits on a daily basis, you're a professional, you know how you're going to incorporate that into your wardrobe. The problem with light colored suits though is that in a sense, they got a casual type of feel. So, they're not going to be as versatile. You can't wear them to as many events that call for a, you know, a kind of a business type of suit look. This also applies to strong patterns suits. Understand that these, again, if you own a variety of suits, if you already have the base suits, these are great to add to your wardrobe, but stripe suits, they're all about business and they're nice, but they're not one of the first three suits I would ever recommend a man purchase. Anything with a strong contrasting color like a houndstooth or something like that, those are really cool suits, but they're not going to be, you know, your first five, not even your first seven. Those are going to be ones, again, for a professional that wears suits on a daily basis. Also, when I talked about semi-solids, understand that, again, from a distance, these look solid, but when you get up close, you see the pattern. A variety of shadow herringbones actually have this. You can get up close and see, hey, this has a little bit of a bird's eye right in there and it's a really nice pattern. But again, from a distance, this looks like a suit that you could pull off in a variety of situations. All that being said, if you're a guy with confidence, if you want to wear clothing that's going to get compliments, that's going to stand out from the crowd, maybe isn't going to be as versatile, but again, when you wear something, people are going to notice, then these bolder patterns, these stronger colors are perfectly fine. You can bring things in, you know, wine, burgundy. You can bring things in a dark green. I love green, one of my favorite colors. But when I wear 
wear those, I know I'm going to be the only guy in the room with that green sports jacket. And sports jackets are really a fun place if, you know, suits aren't your thing, but you still think suiting up is putting on a suit structured like jacket, then sports jackets, there are tons of options out there. You mix and match them with odd trousers, which is pretty much any trouser that isn't made from the same material as the jacket, but I just find that there's so much fun to be had in sports jackets. So, uh, yeah, anyone else a sports jacket fan, let me know down in the comments. Now, let's talk about all the different style options. So, the majority of the jackets you're going to see out there are two-button jackets. Occasionally, you're going to see a three-button jacket. In black tie, you'll definitely see a one-button jacket in some suits, especially those made for a little bit shorter guys. Occasionally, you'll see a jacket out there in a big and tall store that has four to five buttons. In general, stick with two-button jackets, especially for your first five to six suits. If you find a three-button suit and you really, really like the look of it, go for it. There are two and a half, so I'm not going to get into that. That's actually a three button made only to be have that center button button, so it's really a two that has that third extra button just for show. One buttons. I've got a few of these and I think that they're perfectly fine, but they're going to be a little bit more fashion forward in general. The vast majority of men should stick with two button suits. Next up, let's talk about lapels. First up, we've got the notch lapel. Seen on the majority of jackets out there, this is perfectly fine for a business suit and yeah, notch lapels, they are simple, they are classic, they get the job done, but they're also one of the more casual type lapels. Next up, we've got the shawl lapel, and we'll see the shawl lapel on black tie. This is going to be a very elegant classic, but you don't want to get this on a suit. This again is for black tie. Next up, you will see the peak lapel. You see this on both black tie, especially double breasted, and you also see this over on single breasted occasionally on higher end suits. But this is going to be one of the more formal type of lapels. You got to be careful, especially on retro suits or something you find in a vintage shop. These can be really wide, especially those from the 1970s. It's a really nice look, but be careful because it can be too formal and a little bit too eye catching for some. Next up, let's talk about jacket pockets. The breast pocket, the majority of the time will be on the left hand side, and this is just for holding a pocket square. If you see another pocket, it's got two pockets. That's more of a safari jacket type of look and it makes the jacket more casual. Now, when it comes to the breast pocket, you will see a variety of styles. This one is actually sewn into the jacket, but whenever you see a bit of material placed on top, understand that's a patch pocket and it is a more casual style. Now, continuing that down to the bottom pockets on the front part of the jacket, we're going to see three different types. Again, the most casual is going to be the patch pocket in which a fabric is sewn on top of the jacket, but you're also going to see two other types. You're going to see most commonly what's known as a flap pocket, and that is where it's got a flap covering, but the pocket is sewn onto the inside of the jacket. You're also going to see jetted, and some flaps can actually become jetted pockets, and that is where the flap will either tuck in. Jetted pockets are going to be streamlined, and you will see these on black tie. And now moving around to the back of the jacket, let's talk about the different vent styles. You'll see no vents, oftentimes on Italian jackets or black tie, but you'll see this whenever they want to create a really slimmed up silhouette a single vent. This is the least expensive and the one that I really don't like as much, the double vent. This one here is going to be more expensive than a single vent and is more flattering because you put your hands in your pocket, which you probably shouldn't, but uh, yeah, we do anyway. You're not going to expose your buttocks as you would do with the single vent. And by the way, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash the like button. I appreciate when you guys engage with this video. And if you want to learn more, down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link over to the article at Real Men Real Style that goes into more detail, such as the different shoulder types. I'm not going to be able to cover it in this video, but if you're interested in like the Neapolitan shoulder or more of the roped shoulder that we see that, you know, a lot of people consider to be more formal, if you want to go into those type of details, I actually cover it in the article, which I will link to down below. Now, when it comes to your trousers and style options, not as much as you get usually with the jacket, but there are some. First up, do you want to go with cuff or no cuff? So, this is going to be down at the bottom of the hem. If you're a taller guy, I think in general, cuffs look great, but if you're, you know, under five foot ten, I say go with the no cuff look unless you just really like it. Now, you can make this work, but you may want to make sure proportionally the cuffs are cut and made a little bit smaller. Now, when it comes to pleats, there's a big debate online. I've even seen people go to blows on this. No, not really, but pleats in general, I like flat front trousers, but if you're a heavier guy, if you're a bigger guy, if you are going to wear suspenders with your trousers, then definitely go for pleats because pleats give you a little bit more room and they really work for higher waisted trousers. So, at this point, you're doing pretty good. When it comes to the style pyramid, fit 
you've nailed it. You actually have a suit that fits you properly. When it comes to the function, this is actually something that you like. It's going to fit your needs. So, you've nailed it there. When it comes to the fabric, when it comes to the construction, boom, you've paid attention here. You've got this. But to suit up properly as an adult man, don't forget it's about the other pieces as well. So, when it comes to your dress shirt, you want to make sure that you've got a dress shirt that's going to work with this particular suit. Now, the easiest shirt color to default to is going to be white. You can dress it up, you can dress it down incredibly versatile. Next to that is going to be light blue. I also like bringing in the pastels. So, whether it be pink, whether it be lavender, you can find that mint. I mean, really it depends on the color, depends on your colors, but that is pushing a bit more. Understand when you go with darker dress shirt colors, they all actually aren't dress shirts anymore. They become button downs and they are more casual. Dress shirts by their very definition should be a light colored shirt. That being said, you can have fun. If you want something that has a little bit more pattern to it, like stripes, this is a great place to bring them into. And because you're usually wearing a jacket over them, you could even go with something bolder, something with a little bit stronger colors, and uh, it can actually work and look really good. And of course, when it comes to fit, just like the suit, you've got to nail it. Now, unlike suits, you can't let out a shirt. There usually isn't excess material, but you can bring them in. So, the key when you put a shirt on is to make sure it fits you properly in the neck. If it doesn't fit you in the neck, you need to go find another shirt because they basically they have to rebuild the collar. Very difficult to adjust a collar. But if you can get it to fit properly in the neck, next up the shoulder points, then getting that sleeve length adjusted is possible. Not always the easiest thing. They actually have to take off the cuff a lot of times, but you can get it done. But one of the easiest fixes is to actually bring bring in the excess material around the torso if there is that material. So, just darting a shirt, a very easy fix and one that pretty much any tailor can do. And when you're suiting up as an adult man, I do recommend that you have a variety of shirts that you can wear with a particular suit. Think of this again as the interchangeable wardrobe outfit building. If you're going to buy a suit, make sure you pick up three shirts that work with it or have three shirts already in your wardrobe that you know are going to work with it. And there's nothing wrong with getting duplicates if you like white shirts. If you like white shirts with a variety of different stripes, then grab those. Maybe you can get a, you know, variations in blue or go with, you know, whatever color you want that works with that suit and your lifestyle. But again, make sure you, that you look at them and you try and you start building outfits from this. Now, what about the neckties? The necktie dead? Not yet. And things again go back and forth like a pendulum. I think in the next 30 to 40 years, it'll be coming back. But right now, yeah, they're not worn very often. But when you do need a necktie, you want to make sure you've got one. So, have at least two in your collection, even if you don't wear them very often. I like to go with one that is going to be very close in color to my actual suit and then one that is going to be in a bolder, stronger color, maybe a maroon, a red, something like a power tie. Now, about that darker colored tie, maybe it's going to be blue, maybe it's going to be gray or black. Why would you go with a muted? Because you want to go with a more monochromatic look sometimes and this could be for a time again that you just need to be able to show your respect. For a time that you don't really want to draw attention to yourself, you want to go for that monochromatic look. So, if you've got that navy necktie, that navy suit, yeah, it's just a good combination with that white shirt. Isn't really going to win any awards for bright colors or attention being drawn to you, but sometimes that's what you want. Now, what about sweater combinations with sports jackets, with suit combinations? Guys, this is really where you can have a lot of fun and as many of you guys know, I've got a pretty good sweater collection which I love this time of the year as things cool down because looks like this just work for my lifestyle. I can take the jacket off if I'm sitting at my computer. I'm going to be picking up my daughters. I like going with dark colored sweaters, jumpers in general, even dark colored sports jackets but usually from around my kids, they've got dirty hands. But this is something that I just find that I can get a lot of wear and tear out of. Guys, again, what works for you, but turtlenecks with a jacket like this, I just love the combination. This one has a ribbed turtleneck to it, but there are more clad, just, you know, plain turtlenecks. Or you can go with a V neck, maybe wearing a dress shirt underneath it. Or, you know, go with a crew neck. Find what works for you and your lifestyle. And if you live in a hot weather environment, but you still need to dress it up, just bring in a polo. Actually, it works in a lot of situations. Or if you want something even more casual, wearing a Henley with a sports jacket, you can pull that off. And of course, when it comes to accessories, don't forget the pocket square. This is such an easy style upgrade. So many men leave it out. I say go with a simple presidential fold, something that doesn't grab a whole lot of attention. Go with a white pocket square. Right here, I've got a white with a little bit of blue stitching. Just really is something that draws the eye and instantly levels up your style. Even if you're not wearing a necktie, just an open collar. This here says, you know what? I chose not to wear a necktie and I still care about style and I look good. And at this point, let's talk about the foundation of suiting up 
your footwear, your shoe choice. Now, depending on the formality level of how you suit it up, you've got a few options. I know many people are going to say anytime you wear a suit, you've got to wear Oxfords. I agree with that to a point, but there are situations because what if you suit up, but you're commuting to and from work and you're walking a few miles? In that case, I would recommend wearing sneakers with a suit to and from work. Maybe when you get to work, you've got those Oxfords right there in the closet and you can grab them. On the other hand, if you're in Southern California and the weather's always nice, you're commuting to and from work, spending an hour in traffic. Yeah, wear these loafers right here because you can slip them on and off when you're in your vehicle. But yeah, when you're there at work, just wear them right in. They're going to look good. But what if you're riding public transportation? In Chicago, during the winter, you've got sleet, you've got snow, you've just got puddles all over the place. Then I think wearing a pair of boots like this are perfectly fine. Yes, it may be apparently too rugged if you're wearing even a casual suit, but maybe you've got a change, you know, at uh, at the office that you can slip into some casual loafers or something. Yeah, I think when it comes to practicality, when it comes to actually dealing with the situation at hand, yeah, these would be perfectly fine. And that leads me to the question I have for you guys. What do you think of these brown apron derbies? So, I picked these up at Suit Supply and initially I was like, yeah, they're a little bit heavy, clunky, not something I would normally wear. But then I had it pointed out to me, hey, these are perfect in the Midwest when you're commuting to and from work. You want something that you can wear with a casual suit, something, you know, I could wear with this combination right here. That being said, they got an extra thick Vibram sole, which is great whenever you're walking through snow or sleet. You're going to be able to get traction. You're not going to have the cold go right up into your feet. They're going to do a great job being able to deal with the slush, with the puddles. The more I looked at these and when I wore them around the suit supply store, they were actually really comfortable. They kind of grew on me and so I kept them and I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Do you like these brown apron derbies? Let me know in the comments below. And gents, what video to watch next? Check out this one where I get a custom suit from Suit Supply. I've been to so many of their different locations. A great company. I'm proud to support them. In this video right here, I really enjoyed putting together and I think you'll learn a lot about the custom suit process. So, yeah, go check it out.